Hello, my name is Danette Ramsey. I'm a student physical therapist assistant with Jeff State, and we are going to talk about gas gangrene today. Gangrene is the death of body tissue usually associated with loss of vascular supply and followed by a bacterial invasion. There are three types of gangrene. Dry gangrene is the most common form found. It is the result of the disturbance of blood supply to a certain area of body tissue. Moist gangrene results from an invasion of a toxin-producing bacterium that destroys body tissue. Gas gangrene, which is the focus of this PowerPoint, is the invasion of wounds by anaerobic bacteria leading to gas production and tissue breakdown. The immediate symptoms associated with gas gangrene are as follows. It is similar to a soft tissue infection. There is sudden onset of pain. There is the development of blisters containing foul-smelling brownish liquid gas bubbles. There is soft tissue hardening and a discoloration of the soft tissue. All of these are an indication for surgery and debridement. Clostridial myonecrosis is the scientific name for gas gangrene. It is an acute, rapidly progressing, non-pyogenic, invasive clostridial infection of the soft tissue in the body. It can be characterized by toxemia, edema, massive death of tissue, and extensive degree of gas production from the bacteria known as clostridium. There are two types of infections from gas gangrene, endogenous and exogenous. An endogenous infection is caused by contamination from a clostridial focus in the body. An exogenous infection is usually found in patients with compound and are complicated fractures with extensive soft tissue damage. The practice pattern used depends on the amount of tissue that is affected by gas gangrene. You can use one of three practice patterns, 7A, 7B, or 7E. 7A is the prevention and risk reduction for integumentary disorders. 7B is impaired integumentary integrity associated with superficial skin involvement. 7E is impaired integumentary integrity associated with skin involvement extending into fascia, muscle, or bone, and scar formation. There are many diagnostic measures taken into account for someone with gas gangrene. Plan x-rays identify gases deep within body tissues. CAT scans or MRIs assess the spreading of infection along the fascial planes. Always remember that surgical intervention should not be delayed for any reason. The affected areas should be amputated as quickly as possible. Before surgery, a vascular consultation should be considered in order to address number one, whether or not the limb can be salvaged, or number two, early amputation and prosthetic fitting measures. Gas gangrene can spread quickly throughout the body and can be lethal if not controlled. Diagnosis can be established from a frozen section of muscle. Gram stains and cultures are alternatives to the frozen section of muscle but have a slower turnaround time. Radiographs can also show evidence of gas formation in soft tissue but may not be as evident in the early stages. Antibiotics are also administered to the patient for infection control. If the gas gangrene is too significant, amputation may be the only option to save the patient's life and salvage the unharmed portion of the limb. Gas gangrene can affect anyone with the following conditions. Diabetes, thrombosis, malnutrition, immunodeficiency disorders, or the destruction of soft tissue from a traumatic injury. The impaired blood flow and altered sensory status of an area will initiate the formation of the environment needed for clostridium to grow. Once this happens, gas gangrene will spread quickly throughout the soft tissue in the body. Intravenous drug users are also considered high risk for gangrene. Repeated trauma to the soft tissue created, creates an anaerobic environment in order for clostridia to grow. Prevention is key. 
Keep wounds as clean as possible to prevent the growth of clostridia. Excessive special wound care is imperative in those with impaired arterial flow. Early, early immediate intervention is necessary with surgical debridement and the removal of the necrotic tissue. With prompt treatment, 80% of people with gas gangrene affecting the extremities will survive. Prognosis is poor for other sites infected, such as the abdominal wall, uterus, and bowel area. Sites like these cannot be amputated. Only the, the debridement of the necrotic tissue can be performed. This makes it more difficult to deplete the affected area and increases the chance that infection will spread. The NAGI model can be broken down into four areas. Pathology is what happens at the cellular level. Incubation time is the time from the moment of exposure to an infectious agent until signs and symptoms appear of the disease. For gas gangrene, incubation time is less than three days from the time of injury. When there is a significant decrease in the flow of oxygen and nutrition to an area, this will form an anaerobic environment for the production of clostridium. Once clostridium forms, it spreads rapidly throughout the soft tissue and causes widespread tissue damage. Impairments of gas gangrene are increased pain, extensive edema, impaired circulation, and impaired skin integrity, just to name a few. Functional Limitations as you may already know, the amputation of an area may be the best way to control the spe spread of gas gangrene. When an amputation is performed, this will alter the patient's balance, proprioception, and their ability to ambulate normally. Disability. When a person is suffering with gas gangrene, there is a good possibility of prolonged hospital stays in order to reduce the spread of infection while dealing with a large open wound. During this time, a person will not be able to be a functioning role in society, no matter what profession or career they may have. Early diagnosis of gas gangrene can be a result of careful observation of wounds. One should look for signs of tissue death, ischemia, any signs of discoloration, severe pain, sudden edema and sudden loss of pulse in the involved limb. Always document all findings and report to the appropriate medical personnel immediately. Always keep in mind that adequate fluid repla replacement is also necessary during this time. It is also important to assess all pulmonary and cardiac functions. Post-operative wound care as well as special wound care to prevent further skin breakdown is vital. Prevention, as mentioned before, will, will reduce the ability of clostridia to grow and reproduce. Adequate debridement is necessary to reduce the anaerobic growth conditions. If any devitalized tissue is found, notify the doctor immediately. Another important concept in wound care is to position the patient in order to facilitate drainage. Psychological support is critical as these clients can remain alert until death knowing that death is imminent and unavoidable. Whoever may be providing wound care to the patient must prepare the patient emotionally after surgical incision. All realms of patient-client relationships must be considered at this time. High pressure oxygen therapy is one intervention that can be used on gas gangrene. With the use of high pressure oxygen therapy, surgery now seems to be unnecessary and mortality rate from this infection has decreased. The advantages of high pressure oxygen therapy treatment are that it is life saving because there is less heroic surgery needed and it is limb and tissue saving because no major amputations or excisions should be done. The high pressure oxygen therapy increases the rate of of the diffusion of oxygen to the tissues, which increases the healing process of the wound and decreases the amount of necrotic tissue in the area. Even though gas gangrene of the limb is an extremely surgical condition, individual patient preferences should be taken into account. 
An additional therapy intervention for the treatment of gas gangrene instead of amputation is electrical stimulation. More specifically, high voltage pulsed current. When electrical stimulation is used on a wound, research has proven that in the absence of infection, wound size will decrease significantly over a period of time. If your patient were to opt out of surgical intervention for any reason, high pressure oxygen therapy and electrical stimulation are two possible treatment interventions that could be performed to reduce the symptoms of gas gangrene. With proper Prevention methods during wound care after extensive soft, tif soft tissue damage, there is a great chance that you can reduce the formation of gas gangrene. As you can see, gas gangrene has a horrendous widespread effect on soft tissue and spreads rapidly. As noted above, gas gangrene can be treated with amputation, high pressure oxygen therapy, wound care, and electrical stimulation. Next time you hear about gas gangrene, you will now have an idea about the prognosis, pathology, as well as possible treatment options for this disease. Thank you.